We're going to minimise each of the following using a Carnot map. If we have a look at this min term here, we can see we've got the A and the B, which relates to that particular area there. For this min term, we've got the not A and the B again, which is this area. Consequently, we put a 1 in both of those squares there. Once plotted, the next thing to do is to loop the 1s, and here we can see we have a loop of 2. Now, if I look at this particular area of the loop, we can see that's in the not A, and this particular area of the loop we can see is in the A. Now, because it's A and not A, we discard those. Here we can see we have the not B. There's none of the loop there, so we discard that. Now, if we look at all of this, we can see it's entirely in B. Therefore, this loop in fact is B. Consequently, we can actually now say that F is equal to B, which means that this up here minimizes to B. Now for this example, we look at this min term and we can see we've got not A and not B, and that corresponds to this area here. Consequently, what we'll now do, we'll put a 1 in that area. We'll now look at this particular min term and we can see we've got a not A and a B which corresponds to this area, so we'll end up putting a 1 here. Now we'll consider this min term here, which is the A and the not B, which corresponds to this particular area here, so we will plot a 1 there. Once plotted, we'll loop the 1s. There's one loop there, and here is another loop. And you can see that if I shade this in here, it's quite clear that all of that is in not A. If we have a look at the other loop, which I will shade here in blue, and we look closely, we can see that that is entirely in not B. Consequently, F is not A or not B. And we can write that up here, as you can see, as not A or not B. For this example, if we look at this min term here, we can see it's a not A and a not B. Consequently, we will put a 1 here. If we now move on to this min term, we can see that is a not A as well as being a B. Consequently, we'll plot a 1 here. Now, for this min term here, we can see we have an A and we have a B. That will result in us plotting a 1 here. Once plotted, we loop the 1s. I can loop those two and I can loop uh, these two here. Now the next thing to do is to look at the red loop and we can see if I shade that all in, it's quite clearly in not A. If I have a close look at the blue loop, we can see that that is quite clearly in B. Therefore, F will equal not A or B. And consequently, this will minimize to not A or B. For this example, we look at this min term, not A and not B. And consequently, we can plot a 1 here. For this min term, we can see we have an A and a B, and we can plot 1 here. Now, it may be very tempting to actually loop these here, but because they're across a diagonal, we don't do this. So, no, don't do this. Because we do not loop 1s on diagonals, it means that this expression does not minimize. For this example, we'll look at this min term, which is not A and B, and that will mean we will write a 1 here. If we have a look at the other min term, which is this one here, we can see that is A and not B, so we will plot a 1 in this position here. Now again, it might be very tempting to actually loop here, but in fact, no, we mustn't do that. We mustn't loop a diagonal. So this here is another example of something that does not minimize.